Christmas party. I was just counting the door again. You know, we learned, we earned the Lord's profit and then he dressed up every day. You told me three times already. Now put the money in the safe and let's go. Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm not going to that boring Christmas party. What do you mean? Our country cousins came all the way from Kirby County to celebrate with us. That's just it. I refuse to spend one more Christmas with those hillbillies. Those hillbillies, as you call them, are part of our family. Fester's always carrying around that termite infested axe of his. Glenda and Brenda are always messing with my earrings. And then there's Elkin. Well, I just don't want to go, that's all. You're just mad because Uncle Zeke left all of his oil fields and diamond mines to them and not to us. Are you forgetting that those diamond fields and oil mines are worth millions? I'm not forgetting, but we're forced to face the facts. Uncle Zeke wanted them to inherit his wealth and not us. Uncle Zeke, don't think he's so tricky. I never want to hear that name again. Now run along and have fun at the party. You'll be so disappointed if you're not there. They think the world of you. You're right. I am the life of the party. But at any rate, one Christmas without me would not make any difference. Now make my excuses for me, Petunia. Okay, but Oswald's not going to like it. Like I'm afraid of what my brother thinks. Why should I care if it's him? Uh, hey girls, we were driving by and thought we'd pick you up from limo and take you to the Christmas party. Good, the Kirby County bunch should arrive by now. We'll drive by the house and pick them up. Come on, Mimi. Uh, he, Mimi isn't going. Of course she's going. Now stop playing around and let's hit the road. She's not planning to skip out on a party, is she? Do you mind? I'm trying to count my money. Come on, Oswald, I'll explain to Lamar. Is she really not coming? Would you please go and leave me in peace? I can't believe one person would be so selfish. I'm not selfish. I'm only trying to be a good businesswoman. I'm screwed with her precious money. Shh. Now go and wait. Shut the door on your way out. Finally, I thought they'd never leave me. Our city cousins are, cousin Abe. I reckon they must be on their way. Would you like to snack while you wait? Don't mind if I do. Much obliged. I'm sorry, but those are all I had. Don't apologize. This will do me just fine to supper. Dang it, Fester. They meant all for you, boy. I declare I can't take you anywhere. They ain't none of the little cracks with some kind of black stuff on them. That's caviar. Oh, sorry. They ain't none of the caviars with some kind of black stuff on them. The black stuff is caviar. Fester, you're the nice lady back her tray. Here you go. Hmm. Sorry, ma'am. You should probably come in the deep fire next time. Dang it, Fester. She's just trying to be neighborly. Can't cook it. She can't <clears throat> help it worth a flip. I right, declare I can't take you anywhere. Here's what you call a do it yourself taxidermist. Every night at supper, he stuffs his cell. <laughs> 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 we not going to be at Christmas. He's not.
you saw an American Goodwill to me. You see, that's just flirting with me. What should I do? You can't flirt back, dummy. Excuse me, ma'am. You're like my first wife. How many times have you been married? <laughs> None. Bless his heart, he ain't never been too good with women. When the mouth had all kinds of girlfriends, when the country fair was here last year, I took Mary Sue for the tunnel of love. You did, Besser? I didn't know that. How was it? I didn't like it a bit. It was dark and cold. We got all wet. Was, <laughs> was there a leak in the boat? In the boat? Bless his heart. Bless his ever loving heart. The wheel's turning, but the hamster's dead. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, but do you know when our city cousins are going to be here? They just called and said they'd be here any minute. It just ain't Christmas without our wonderful city cousins to sing carols with. The church eggnog with. To sit around the Christmas tree with. Hey, sorry I'm late. Um, country club ain't too far from here. Is everybody else at the Christmas party? Um, they're all waiting in the limo. Um, all except for Mimi, that is. Uh, I'm afraid she's not going to make it this evening. Mimi's not going to be at the Christmas party? She ain't took sick, did she? Uh, not exactly. But I won't be able to smell Mimi's sweet smell perfume. And I won't get to touch her dangly earring. And I won't get to square dance with her none. Uh, you can square, um, I mean dance with Petunia. Because Petunia's always tripping over my feet. Well, dance with the twins. I'd rather have my feet stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't reckon you guys brought your party clothes with you. Of course we brought our party clothes. Good. Or I'm leaving my home when you're wearing them. Uh, come on, son. <laughs> we'll be late. We're on our way. Did you tell them about Mimi? He told us. Don't fret, because we're cleaning out of dance with you tonight. <coughs> oh, goody. And don't worry about being clumsy. You can't help it bless your heart. I hope you won't allow Mimi's absence to ruin your evening. Mimi has always been my favorite cousin. The prettiest, brightest, most glamorous. Oh, sorry, Cousin Petunia. That's all right. I get good to make you and your big mouth. But I didn't mean that at all. It's okay, really. All I meant to say was that Cousin Mimi is so sophisticated, and Cousin Petunia as well, she's... That's enough, Linda May. Yeah, just hush up. Shall we go? <laughs> What's Mimi have that I don't have? I wouldn't worry, Cousin Petunia. Everybody can't be as suave as Cousin Mimi. We also think you're real sweet. <laughs> sweet. They think I'm sweet. All right, see you later, little hair for you. And don't worry about that there food you cooked up. A little practice, you'll be cooking our, our cornbread and turnip grains in no time flat. And we'll help you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cornbread and turnip greens. Anybody here? Oh! Whew. Finally, just me and my money. Couldn't very well leave you locked in that lonely safe over Christmas. Perhaps I'll count you again before her bed. That'll be fun. Whew. I will say, it is fun being here all alone on Christmas Eve. No domestic servants, no hillbillies trying to dangle my earrings or dance a jig with me. Whew. Hello? Is anybody there? Come out, whoever you are. <laughs> I warn you, I'm armed and dangerous. <laughs> Come on out. <laughs> Stay back. Just settle down there, little lady. I ain't gonna hurt you none. Who are you? How'd you get in my closet? Don't you recognize me? I'm your dearly departed Uncle Zeke Taylor. No. <laughs> Uncle Zeke died three years ago. Now, who are you? Well, to be honest with you, I'm just his spirit. I ain't had much practice walking through walls and stuff. And I think I'm supposed to moan a lot, too. Ooh. <laughs> I must be dreaming. 
You ain't dreaming, and you ain't in Kansas no more either. <laughs> Perhaps if I splash some water on my face. Just settle your nerves long enough for us to discuss while I'm here. If you're Uncle Zeke, then prove it. <laughs> Dang it, okay. See? Oh! Hi! Um, why'd you scare me like that? I have a very sensitive nervous system. Um, and I was hoping to be alone on Christmas Eve. When I was alive on this here earth, I felt the same way, child. I just wanted to be all by my lonesome and count all my money day after day. Speaking of money, and since you are the late Uncle Zeke, why did you give all your money to the country bumpkins and leave us city folks with nothing? I left you $100,000 each. I wouldn't hardly call that nothing. I went through that measly amount in weeks. Well, child, it's like this. Elkin and his clan have never had anything. A broke down <laughs> cabin, no floors, an outhouse for a bathroom. Meanwhile, you and your brothers and sisters would have everything you've ever wanted. That wasn't enough. I wanted more. Besides, if you care about them while you're dead, why didn't take care of them when you're alive? Because I was so selfish. That's why. They wear these here. I wear these here chains. <clears throat> Each one of these represents a year of selfishness that I lived on the earth. And you're telling me this why? I don't want you to suffer the same plight as I did. Okay. And. I declare, I can see you're the same stingy gal I remember way back when. You're going to need more convincing than that. So here's the deal. Are you ready? I'm not sure. Well, you're going to be visited by three spirits tonight. Ooh. Am I supposed to be scared now? It would help. How about this? Tonight you will be visited by three spirits and you will be shown how your selfishness and your spite towards your friends and family affect everybody around you who you love and who love you. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm a selfish human being. Now can you turn the lights back on and forget all this and run along? It's too late, little angel. The spirits are already on their way. There ain't no way to stop them. They'll be visiting all through the night. All night, but I won't get any of my beauty sleep. The first visit will happen around midnight. Midnight? You don't understand. Bye-bye now. You have a very Merry Christmas. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> this is all the dream, and I'll wake up at any moment. Spirit realm. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. 
until you lose. Then you feel real lousy because you lost. Sometimes it makes you want to cry. Well, he never said that in the spirit realm. Yeah, I think I messed up. Where are we? <laughs> Look around. Don't you recognize it? It looks a little like... Good morning, boys and girls. Good, Good morning, morning, Miss Smith. Smith. Has anyone seen Mimi this morning? I'm right here, Miss Smith. She can't hear you, silly. She's just a shadow. Then why'd you tell her to shh? Are you trying to tell me how to do my job? Somebody or? needs to. <laughs> you was outside putting her makeup on a minute ago. Her makeup? She's only in the third grade. Believe it. It's Miss Smith, my Sunday school teacher. You sure didn't take a liking to her back then. Miss Smith, I refuse to sit by them. Well, maybe this is the only chair left. Come on, have a seat. I won't. Hey, little cousin baby, remember Willis? Will you cousin some pinky? Who is me? I'm Brenda May. And I'm Brenda May. We'll take a vote of right here. The quick says you little heifer. It's like we say, it's like we say in the country, if you want to forget your troubles, wear tight shoes. Why are you two talking to me? I've never seen you before in my life. Mimi, please take a seat now. Well, okay, just so we can get this boring lesson over with. It's good to have our guests this morning from Cricket County. Class, this is Linda Bay and Brenda May Taylor. Howdy, everybody. We're Mimi's cousins from the country. I'm so embarrassed. You didn't treat your poor little cousins very good now, did you? That was a terrible thing I said. But they still loved you so much. Today, children, we're going to be studying Philippians 2-3. Listen to what it says. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, and let each esteem others better than themselves. Do we know what the Bible is telling us here? That we shouldn't be conceited, and that we should think of others as being better than ourselves. That's right. Hogwash! Are you trying to tell me I could, I should consider those hillbillies as being better than myself? Yes, you see. But look at their clothes. Their Bible is even worn out. Now this is a Bible. <laughs> Some, someone should say something to that little brat parent. But remember, that little brat is you. Look how you treated them. And all they ever wanted to do was spend a little time with their cousin who lived in the city. Mm -hmm. Before we go into our Bible study this morning, I thought we'd have a little Christmas party. This is the Sunday before Christmas, but before we get started, I'd like us to stand and sing a Christmas song. Oh, oh my God. Mine is too. A candy bar? What kind of gift is this? And even worse than that, I received the same gift as everyone 
a terrible thing to say to such a sweet lady. She was just trying to do something nice. That was the year Miss Smith's husband passed away, and Mama was very tight for her. Do you remember what you did with that there gift she gave you? Please, I don't want to watch anymore. Hold your horses just a minute. Look. Miss Smith, at least you could have put a little thought into your gift. Well, here's what I think about your gift. Please, please, I don't want to watch anymore. I can tell by your screen. Fester! How long have you been hiding back there? Who's Fester? I'm, I'm the spirit of Christmas present. <sighs> Why is it that all you spirits look familiar to me? I reckon we all got this kind of faces. But I'm happier than a hog on a mud hole. You know why? Because it's Christmas time. The best time of the year. Christmas times are coming. Christmas times are coming. Christmas times are coming. So I come to visit you. <laughs> You sure are in a good mood, Spirit of Christmas present. That's because it's the greatest time of the year. The stars shine, Jesus was born, and He changed the world forever. Christmas times are coming, Christmas times are coming. Christmas times are coming, so we'll take a little trip. <laughs> you mean I must wrap up again? You'll freeze if you don't. It's so cold, my grandma sleeps each other all night, and they don't even sleep together. Well, where are we going? You'll see just as soon as we get there. Come on. Christmas times are coming, Christmas. <laughs> to Christmas and family, to Christmas and family. Christmas party, Cousin Oswald. It sure is. It's better than any old barn dance we have back in Cricket County. I just wish Cousin Mimi could be here with us. Yeah, it's like trying to rope a heifer and turn around and it ain't there. <laughs> right here, ain't this nice and cozy? All we did was walk out, turn around, and come back in. Well, that's what the directions say. <laughs> <laughs> but look, we're somewhere else. Yeah, we're at that there Christmas party you didn't want to go to. It sure looks like everybody's having fun. <coughs> Your family always has fun when they get together. How can they be having fun when I was always like the party? We'll watch and listen for a minute. Oh. Hey guys, I know what we can do. Let's play a game. <gasps> Excuse me, I gotta be a part of this. Maybe be sure you watch real close. But, um, okay. Fester, you're just in time for charades. Well, hot dog, I get to go first. Are you ready? <laughs> Jumping down through the necks. Golly, Cousin Elkin, you're real good. Fester, you do the same thing every time we play this game. It ain't hard to guess what you're going to be. I don't either. Sometimes I do a grizzly bear. Okay, I got another one. You ready? A grizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> you're really good, Brendan Hey, I got a plan. Why don't we play 20 questions? I got one. Is it a person? Yes. Is it an animal? Sort of. A pig? Can be. Does it live I know, I know, I know. It's Miss Applegate over on 14th Street. She be real pig sometimes. Cousin Mimi, you cannot really play. You're not even really here, remember? I know, a grizzly bear. She can be very grizzly sometimes. So, hold on a minute. So, this is a person who can be like a pig, unfortunately lives close by, and on days can be grizzly. I know who it is. It's Mimi, isn't it? Got it. Um, that's a good one. <laughs> Cousin Pete, I don't think that's very funny at all. That was mean. That's not very nice. Yeah, you didn't hear it defend herself. Look how my country cousins are taking up for me. 
I'm sorry. I guess I just got ahead of myself. I should say that you did. Fester? Who's Fester? I'm sorry, this is being a Christmas present. Who's that little girl over there? Oh, her, remember that girl that came to your dress shop earlier? Yeah. That's her. Okay. Um, she looks so weak. That's because she is. She don't get the proper medical treatment soon. She ain't going to make it at all. Why didn't somebody tell me? They tried to. You're too busy counting your money. I was just trying to be a successful businesswoman. Wait! Little girl! Here you go, Cousin Oswald. My little family and yours. Merry criminal. Elkin, you shouldn't have. Ooh, that's a big present. <clears throat> Open it. Cousin Petunia, you know how you've always wanted your very own rare diamond necklace? Yes. Well, I got you a rag doll. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that kind of looks like Annabelle. <laughs> Can you tell who it is? It's you. I call it Petunia, too. <laughs> you made this friend of mine? I don't know what to say. That took a lot of... Precious time. Yes, ma'am, but I want it to be just right. Thank you, Brenda May. I'll treasure it always. I'm next. Here, Cousin Pete. This is for you. You know that you know how I always dress up as a shepherd for Christmas time? Yes, you do it every year. Well, I got my carving knife and a piece of oak. Carving's here shepherd myself, just for you. I didn't know you could carve like this. It's really good. Shucks, it was nothing. Jesus was wood carver too, you know. I'll sit on my desk at the office so everybody can see it. Here you go, Cousin Oswald. This here rifle was passed down from my granddaddy to my daddy, and my daddy gave it to me. I can't accept such an heirloom. Well, it's not an heirloom. It's a Remington. <laughs> my daddy gave me three guns, so I have plenty more to give my son when he gets older. I'll cherish it always. We have another gift, but it's for Cousin Mimi. Oh, look, this little angel. It's pure porcelain. It's been in the family for a long time. Not sure how long. I just know it's been long. We wanted to give it to Cousin Mimi because she's like our own little angel in our family. Oh, did you hear that spirit? I'm like the little angel in the family. That's the sweetest thing I ever heard. I think I might cry. No, I'm good. Okay, anyway, but that's just so sweet. Cousin Elkin, we'll give you gifts when we get back to the house. Oh, sure. Cousin Oswald, you don't have to do that. Well, sure glad you did. Yeah, it's like we say in the country. <laughs> if you want to forget your troubles, wear tight shoes. <laughs> All right, let's go to the limo and uh, look at Christmas lights on the way back to the house. Good idea. Have a grab the coats and follow me. Little angel, I sure wish Cousin Mimi could have been here tonight. It just said Christmas without her smiling face. Did you hear that spirit? Although I've been nothing but cruel to my cousins, they still love me. They really, really love me. Life goes by pretty darn fast. Our friends and family gave to us for a short little time. I think we should treasure them while we got them, don't you? Yes, I do. I, I know now that Christmas is a time for friends and family. I was too busy making money, and the more money I made, the more money I wanted to make. It seemed I was alone most of the time, and I was okay with that. Oh! Don't tell me. Don't tell me. You're the spirit of Christmas, like future yet to come, and you're here to show me what I'm headed for if I don't change my way. So, where are we going? Right here. Is everything ready? Yes, lots of flowers just arrived. I can't believe it. I mean, I just, I can't believe it. It's not so we have to be strong for the others. I don't understand what's going on. Friend of me, friend of me. You arrived. We drove all night in Fester's pickup truck to get here on time. How's he holding up? He's taking it pretty hard. He'll be alone in just a minute. What's going on? Is someone sick? Pastor <coughs> said he should be ready in a few. You know what the saddest part of this whole thing is? I never got the chance to say goodbye. Goodbye? You mean if someone is, they're waiting to go to a... You still plan on saying a few words? Well, I've been trying to, but I can't. Think about it. Let me see what you have so far. There's nothing. There's nothing on here at all. I mean, you're supposed to talk about the good deeds the disease did while on Earth. You know, the, the good things they did to their fellow man. Well, she did. She did a lot of good things. I know. Well, what about that time she? That time she. What about last year when she? 
can't think of one nice thing to say about her. I wonder, I wonder who it could be. There was that one time when she saved a puppy from drowning in a creek. Linda May, that was you who saved that puppy. Well, how about all that money she gave to help them families who lost their home in a flood two years ago? That was you that gave that money. You can't go out there to that funeral service without saying something good she's done in her life. <laughs> I know. Why don't we, uh, why don't we try to write a few things down that she said that was really nice? Anybody got any? One time, she told me I was as smart as a cuckoo clock. <laughs> cuckoo clocks aren't smart, are they? <laughs> well, there was that time she compared me to the beautiful red barn. She did? And she said, there may be a barn on the hill, but that doesn't mean there's hay in the lawn. <laughs> that was beautiful. I know. That wasn't nice at all. <laughs> that time she made it by a layup. Tell me about it. Well, she was making a weird faces and funny noises and stuff. It was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> she was suffering from kidney stones. Well, we don't have to say why she was making all the funny faces. Yes, sir, there you are. Here, let me fix your shirt. Who would they be talking about? Whose funeral are they going to? <coughs> Duster, what's that you have in your hand? Oh, look, the little porcelain angel. The one we gave her for Christmas that year. I thought maybe we could bury her with her. Would that be okay? I think I should be fine. Porcelain angel? Well, they gave that to Spirit, and I'm afraid of what you want to tell me. That's our music. Let's go. Aren't we going to take the bouquet in? The bouquet's for the gravesite. Does this bouquet reveal the name of the person they've been talking about? Here, before I look, are these the things that will be or the things that only may be? It's me. It's me they've been talking about. Oh, spirit, I'm, I don't know what to do. Please take me away from here. I understand my lesson. Christmas is about a time to give and about family and um, helping others. I remember the uh, scripture Miss Smith showed us, Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, in the, but in the loneliness, let everybody be saved in yourself. Please, please, Spirit, don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Me, are you don't right? Leave me. Please, Oswald, oh my God. Oh. You're here! Mimi, you're, you're not the hugging type. What's going on? I thought I heard yelling. You're here and... Oh my gosh! Everybody's here! Mimi, are you having one of your nervous, nervous breakdowns? Would you like me to go get your medicine? Of course not, silly. I'm just happy to see you all. There's my coat that I wore the first time. Um, the first spirit that took me in here. So second door, I mean the second, the door, the second, um... Spirit took me through. Yeah, you're all here. You were there, and you were there, and you, and you, all of you were there. Here, I want to give you some presents that I have for you. Well, hold, hold on a minute. Let me get it straight. You giving us gifts. Well, they were for me. I was going to open them, but you can have them now. <laughs> they go. Don't dry clean them. Thank you. Don't break that. <laughs> Open them! Open Mimi, them. what has gotten into you? <sighs> Philippians 2, 3, of course. Look at my fancy dress, Brenda May. Look at my fancy dress, Glenda May. <laughs> my dress is prettier than both of them. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I'll change those if you want for um, some more masculine items. Y'all wouldn't have to lift a hand. You don't know how to cook. 
Then I'll have it catered and I'll pay for it because I have money. <laughs> Gee, that sure is nice of you. If you ever need to use my axe, just let me know. Pastor, that is the most beautiful axe I've ever seen. Maybe we should call the doctor. <laughs> <sighs> It's just, life is wonderful. I, I think I'm gonna call my old Sunday school teacher. Uh, listen, it's really late. Just call her tomorrow. Okay, I'll call her tomorrow. <gasps> it's the carolers, oh, it's the, the carolers! for some eggnog. Petunia, it was all a dream, wasn't it? Does it really matter? I, I guess not. Merry Christmas, Petunia. Merry Christmas, Mimi. Don't make me come visit you this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 